Good afternoon, Indiana Kentucky Conference. My name is the Reverend Chad Abbott, and I am the Conference Minister for the Indiana Kentucky Conference. And welcome to this, our Wednesday noon hour video series on the Revolutionary Love um, Project by Valerie Coor, who was one of our keynote address speakers for this recent General Synod here back in July for the United Church of Christ. And what a joy it is to be with you each Wednesday as we've already now covered three of the areas um, of focus on this revolutionary love wheel that Valerie talks about. Um, we have talked about wonder and we've talked about grieve and we talked about last week about fight. And so this week we're actually pivoting a little bit towards another part of the wheel um, where we are going to focus on our not just our relationships with others, but a really hard one, um, which is our relationship with people we might consider our opponents. Um, and that's really difficult. We live in an age uh, where, boy, we've got a lot of those, and we don't know quite how to live in right relationship with them. And so I'm very blessed to have with me here today to uh, really engage in that conversation um, around the word rage, um, and that is uh, Kyle Ingram, and Kyle is one of our delegates from General Sin our recent General Sin and Kyle, uh, why don't you introduce yourself and share a little bit about your journey? Uh, sure, thanks Chad for having me. Um, so uh, as Chad said, I was a delegate for last this past Synod for the IKC. Um, I am a lay member at First United Church in Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, but I live in Franklin, Indiana with my wife, the Reverend Dr. Hannah Adams Ingram, who is the chaplain at Franklin College um, and a uh, ordained UCC minister. Uh, I also um, serve um, kind of the larger settings. Um, so I am part of the WISE team for the IKC. Uh, and I am also a board member of the UCC's mental health network. Um, so I, I've kind of been plugged into lots of different spaces and places in the UCC here in the last uh, couple of years. Yeah, I'm glad well, we are. We are so grateful for your leadership and for having been a part of this recent synod. It certainly was a unique one. Um, and uh, it was unique in so many ways, but in part because uh, it was virtual for the first time. Um, and part of that virtual experience was we actually had Valerie Coor, um, not with us in the room, but in the virtual room, in the virtual space. She shared about this revolutionary love wheel. Um, and it has, I believe it is, um, I, I think it's 10 um, different words that come from this wheel. Uh, there's nine on the, in the interior and one on the outside. And the last one on the outside is joy. Like I said, we've covered three. Today we're going to cover rage. And rage is really about um, uh, divine, div what she calls like divine rage, um, and, and how our rage uh, relates to injustice or it relates to our relationship with others for whom we may have a difficult time being in relationship with. So I'm actually going to uh, just give me a brief minute here to get the video up. We're going to show the video of Valerie talking about rage. And then uh, Kyle, you and I are just going to dialogue a little bit about what she had to say here. So give me a brief moment. Okay. So many of us have inherited spiritual traditions, faith traditions that seem to say, no, there's no role for rage in the work of loving our neighbors, loving others. I say, we simply need to look closer. So think of the goddess Kali in the Hindu tradition. If you don't know her, she is the fiercest form of the Hindu goddess. She is clad in tiger skin. She's wearing a garland of skulls. Her mouth is agape. Her tongue is rolling out as she drinks the blood of life. And yet she is revered as a divine mother because she protects us. Think of the fury in the eyes of Jesus when he overturned the tables of the money changers and the temples in Christian scripture. If we look close enough, there are instances of what I call divine rage all throughout our stories and mythologies and our wisdom traditions. The aim of divine rage is not vengeance, 
the aim of divine rage is to reorder the world. All right. That is, um, there's a lot there to un kind of unpack a little bit, I think. And she talks about rage as kind of um, a divine rage, but she also talks about it being this kind of a fury of energy that happens in the body and it's our kind of our body's power and way uh, of protecting ourselves and but it's also she says like it's it's a ra rage is like a, a way to honor and tend to our own pain so that uh, our trauma the trauma does not kind of um, take over our ability to see the humanity and another person and that's actually been one of the constant themes in these other uh, areas that we have explored is being able to be um, have the capacity to see the divine in the other person and sometimes what sh I hear and what she said is we, we can't ever get to the space where rage becomes becomes vengeance where it becomes um, a, a, a tool towards oppressing another human being it's actually there to transform the systems um, and of injustice in which we live. Uh, that's a different form of rage. One she says, for example, Jesus used when he overturned the tables. Very fascinating. Uh, so Kyle, let's dive in a little bit. What do you What do you think? Goodness. Um, so I don't know if it, it if I'm being punished or if it's divine providence that you know that you wanted me to talk about rage a little <laughs> bit. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, there's a lot to unpack in that uh, because, you know, I have, and I'm sure there's lots of folks on here who uh, can also say this, like, I have a very complicated relationship with rage and with anger, right? Um, not just because I grew up uh, in, in the middle of Indiana um, where niceness and sort of politeness is, uh, is sort of the the central virtue, right, of, right. of Indiana. Um, but I also grew up um, kind of evangelical Baptist, and I grew up um, really in, in a, uh, personally in a, in a um, kind of environment where I didn't have a lot of um, examples or role models of how to, like she said, like how to channel and to mm -hmm. find healthy containers for rage um and, and even some of the like i personally i, I really love um fred rogers um mm. but but not really someone that um at least at first glance uh, strikes you as someone who uh has a lot of rage and has figured out how to channel that and harness that um that's not to say that his inner life not might not have been filled with rage who knows um but well, did his wife talk about that at one point that that actually when you get to know Fred just a little bit, there's yeah. definitely a little rage underneath there, right? Yeah. I mean, so I mean, it's, I can't imagine that it's not just a part, a regular part of all of us. It's yeah. It's a kind of like you said, but what's the container by which we actually use it for? As she said in the video, the reordering of the world, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I grew up without without a lot of examples of how to right. how to channel rage and and really um you know i ended up needing to do some work in in college and you know um setting aside some of the other challenges of going um that i had in college at a, a sort of moderate conservative uh, christian school um to their credit, they had some wonderful counselors that were able to kind of walk me through some of the ways in which I had a really problematic relationship with rage. Uh, one that I was afraid of rage because uh, in my mind, rage was this thing that was, you know, chaotic and kind of indiscriminately violent, you know, or, or, or um, kind of powerful in a way that was destabilizing. Um, and, uh, my counselor brought up that very, um, metaphor from the Bible, that very story from the Bible of Jesus, uh, harnessing his, uh, righteous indignation, right? His rage about what was occurring that should not have been. 
right? This this like like Valerie identified rage is a it's kind of a, a touchstone or a, um, a upswelling of a recognition of a that which should not be um, that it doesn't have to be this way, and so um, yeah, I've spent post college life trying to recover uh, a notion of, of uh, divine rage. Um, yeah. Well, I, I, I like how you framed it as like, you know, not many of us had good role models for that at all. I don't think any of us really did. I mean, I, and I think it's one of those dynamics of um, when, when, when I think about rage, she started off that whole um, uh, video by saying not, not many of us come from religious traditions where rage is either a virtue or thought of as something that's helpful. And, and, and it's almost like, Oh no, 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 we don't do that. We just, we gotta, we gotta suppress it and press it down and press it down. And of course we all know how that works. It just eventually right. explodes. And what I, what I hear in her is it's, it's not a, I think maybe what people are worried about is that vengeance that people will use it for uh, those spaces where things should not be happening right as a as an oppressive tool um and and rightly so like we should we should always be we should always be cautious about that side of rage but what i hear in her uh what i hear in jesus is that that there's another side to it that allows us to step back from the precipice of of our oppressive ways and evil and actually see ourselves and and our neighbor for who we truly are made in the image of God. And and sometimes we have to speak hard words and sometimes we have to hear hard words. Um, and, and that's part of the healing process I hear her saying is, you know, you can't just leave out part of the healing process. Sometimes there's there, there are difficult things we ourselves need to hear and repent from. And sometimes, sometimes we have to really, have, we're the ones who have to give the hard words that people need to hear. But there, at some point, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about like, even, um, you know, like, like David and, and, and um, Bathsheba and, and David being told, no, you're the guy, you know, in that story. Um where he was the one who actually was the one who did did the wrong thing and it's like oh my gosh you know and but it takes it takes someone saying yeah that's not right you, you know that circumstance is not right but 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 i think sometimes we're 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 a little uh, that niceness creeps in we're a little afraid of actually going to that space where yeah. we might open up up enough to be able to transform our lives together well, yeah, and I think that um, there's a way in which not attending to your rage is a luxury. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's something that, because I mean, for Valerie, the way Valerie kind of frames it, right, is that rage is a response to injustice. It's a, it's it's a response to either some way in which you have been wronged, or it is a recognition and a um, an empathy, a co-collaboration with those who have been wronged, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and I think it it's really easy. I have found it very easy um, to to opt out of sitting in that rage or attending to that rage because it is right. much easier um, for me to not attend to the the pain and the ways in which you know I have been wrong but also more importantly the ways that um that my my kin you know throughout um the world have been wronged and um and I think it was interesting to watch um I don't know if you've seen the video um of Kimberly Jones um kind of in the aftermath of some of the um, the events in Minneapolis um, during the Black Lives Matter protests that she had this discussion about, um, you know, 
very kind of vividly and, and viscerally saying, why should I care about if I think if your football hall of fame is, is burning to the ground, if, if your targets are, are burning, like, mm-hmm. you know, when those are symbols, those are actual tangible kind of structures that have been used to oppress and, and, mm-hmm. and harm mm-hmm. black folks in this country. And, uh, right. And so there's this kind of like, and I think the, the reaction to that level of kind of divine rage, I want to call it that. Right. Um, and the way that people were like, oh, how, how could you support riots? How could you support property damage um it's really revealing a lot about how we as a society respond to and engage with with rage right it's much more preferable to look away it's much more Mm -hmm. preferable to maintain even the semblance of peace Mm -hmm. for some than to kind of engage in that right And, and and interestingly for me the the rage uh in my experience at least is is how do you because it, it shows up in the body right so it might it might show up in the world out there in, in terms of our experience with one another or a, an event like in minneapolis or some other something that uh, brings rage to the surface but it shows up in our bodies. And I, don't, I think one of the things is that we don't quite know what to do with our bodies mm. as spiritual beings. Like, like it's almost like, whoa, where did that, where did that come from? That's totally, we, we, have not, we have not really tended to the body in a way uh, spiritually that allows us to know how to channel it, like you were talking earlier, in ways that are constructive, compassionate, empathetic, um, compassionate. And... And so it's it's interesting that that then it gets then it gets kind of like moved somewhere else, right? And that's that yeah. is actually the danger of why I think it could become something that's 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 not healthy or helpful. What what I hear her saying is, let how do we be present to that rage in the moment in in a circumstance, but also how that circumstance ends up in our body? And the thing about it, uh, at least that I've learned about things like rage and trauma and emotion is that they, they show up in our bodies, but they show up in our bodies uh, because of centuries of doing so in our forebears. And we, we, the, the, the harm, I think in some ways, is we have not spent enough time healing those centuries of, of what rage and trauma and all that has done to our spirits and our bodies. So we show up in these bodies and we hear yeah. all kind. we deal with all kinds of things in our, in our sphere of influence. And all of a sudden, when one of those hits the, the rage button, it's just like, but all of a sudden we have not dealt with the body. So we don't know what to do with it. It is such an interesting thing because she did talk about the body in her, in her work um, there in that paragraph about, about um, how, how rage works and trauma yeah. works. Um, and so it's a pretty powerful thing. I think as Christians, that's that we have to find a better way of figuring out how to spiritually attune ourselves to our own bodies and to how those the the our rage ends up impacting and uh, affecting other communities for whom we're in communication and in relationship with. So, um, well, is there any, we're kind of coming up on the end of our time. I mean, is there any, I know it's short, but I feel like we talked for like an hour here. Is there, um, is there, for all of our listeners that are out there, is there anything that uh, just kind of like as a little wrap up that you might want to share about this notion of rage? So I know that you're a Ted Lasso fan. I'm a Ted Ted Lasso Lasso fan. 100%. Um, So uh, in season one, uh, when Ted is really, uh, responding in a very strong way to this British notion of, I, I think, I want to make sure I quote, the, it's the hope that kills you. Yes, 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 yeah? yes. Okay. And he's like, no, it's not the hope that kills you. Um, you know, I think to tag onto that, it, it, it's the apathy, right, mm. that kills you. It, it's the, um, I'm more afraid of now, um, of 
the moment when I no longer respond to injustice with a deep welling of, of rage. Like when I, when I no longer feel that embodied, even if I don't know how to contain it or to direct right. it yet, right. yeah, uh, yeah. the moments where if I, when I can look away without feeling anything, um, those are the moments that I'm more, more afraid of that. Um, and yeah, so I'm yeah. glad to have this conversation of, yeah. um, you know, it is, rage is something that, that helps you understand what you care about, right? Yeah. And, and um, where you can direct your energies. And I know you're going to talk about that in the next couple of weeks, right? Um, we are, yeah. As, as you, as Valerie invites us to reimagine. Yeah, uh, listen and reimagine. That's where yeah. we're headed next. Absolutely. I, but I, I mean, I think it's it's hard to listen. It's hard to even reimagine when you're in the 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 deep and en- well of energy of rage. And yeah. so that's why they're together, though. I think mm-hmm. is that like you can't have rage without also li- deep deep listening and 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 reimagining even our relationships with each other. Yeah, and I think that it's an opportunity, right, for the church yeah. to figure yeah. out ways to embody and to to cultivate in, in its in people a way to to kind of channel and to yeah. attend to the rage, right? Yeah, absolutely. So that we can move to the listen. Um, yeah. And you're right. I think that we don't have a lot of examples, and we don't have embodied rituals really in the at least yeah. the evangelical, or excuse me, at least in the Protestant Christian church, like right, right. of how to, to feel that rage. And, right. And, and you're 100% right. And it's interesting to me, if you look at the wheel, um, this section of the wheel, you've got um, rage and listen, uh, and then you have reimagine. But before you get to where it talks about um, opponents, she has this phrase tending the wound. Yeah. And I and I really think that rage is about naming the wound. It it but you can't you can't tend to it without expressing the 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 um, magnitude of a wound. And and so we we are we are good at going, oh well. And 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 just kind of glossing over it or not even noticing it at all or not talking about it because quite frankly wounds hurt so instead of tending to that wound um and even allowing the rage to to happen um listening and reimagining aren't going to matter we got to actually tend to the wound and i think that's why it's a really good reason to start this section of the wheel with rage it's really powerful so kyle i want to really thank you for your time today uh, for being with us here uh, on our noon hour videos uh, each week. Friends, we'll be back again uh, next week with another one of our, our uh, delegates from General Synod 33 as we look at the word listen um, and we continue on that wheel of tending to the wound. Friends, have a wonderful week. It's great to be with you in the Indiana-Kentucky Conference as we love and serve like Jesus. <laughs>